Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be proving an inequality. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's get started. So we have the quantity a times a plus b plus b times the quantity b plus 1. And we're trying to prove that this is greater than or equal to negative 1 third. So first of all, I would like to, you know, just add 1 third to both sides and distribute everything. So what I'm trying to do here is basically, after adding 1 third, I'm trying to show that this quantity, this sum, is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, it cannot take any negative values. So I'll be presenting two methods, like I said earlier. Let's start with the first one. So my first method basically involves treating this as the left-hand side, I mean, as a quadratic equation in A. So let's go ahead and write it that way. So I kind of have something like a squared plus b times a plus b squared plus b plus one third. So if I kind of, you know, treat this as a quadratic equation or quadratic function, I can set it equal to zero as well as an equation. Uh, so here we have a quadratic in a and b squared plus b plus one third is our constant in this case because anything besides a is considered a constant. And now I can go ahead and take a look at the discriminant of this quadratic. What is the discriminant? You know, discriminant, we use delta, the Greek letter for delta. And then we can write it as b squared minus 4ac. a is 1 here. In this case, it's the coefficient of a squared. Multiply by the constant b squared plus b plus 1 third. If you simplify the discriminant, the delta, you get negative 3b squared minus 4b minus 4 thirds. Now, in order to understand uh, what's going on here, I'll take out a negative 3, and then inside the parentheses, I should be getting b squared plus 4 thirds of b plus 4 ninths. Now, notice that the expression inside the parentheses can be written as a perfect square. Perfect. Why? Because it's equivalent to b plus 2 thirds quantity squared. In other words, if you have anything like x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, that is considered a perfect square. In other words, x plus y quantity squared. So that's what we did. And what does that mean? So the discriminant, the delta, is equal to negative 3 times something squared. As you know, a square cannot be negative. So, and when you multiply this negative 3, uh, something that cannot be negative by, uh, you know, um, negative 3, well, what is that supposed to mean? That means that this expression is always going to be less than or equal to 0. That means, in this case, it cannot be positive because we're multiplying by negative 3. Great. So if the discriminant cannot be positive, you remember for a quadratic equation, there are three cases, right? When you graph it, either it has two x-intercepts or a single x-intercept, which means it's tangent to the x-axis, or it doesn't intersect the x-axis at all. So the cases are basically this is the discriminant is positive, this is where the discriminant is negative, and this is where the discriminant is zero. Since we are not able to get the case where discriminant, uh, you know, cannot be positive, so we'll basically basically forget about it. So that means that our parabola, and in this case, since it's less than or equal to zero, you can safely say that delta can be zero, right? That means that uh, this equation actually has. Uh, cannot have two solutions, right? So since the discriminant is that way, our expression, our problem, and also one thing to keep in mind is that the coefficient of a squared is positive. So this is an upward parabola. And our parabola is always going to be on the x-axis or above the x-axis, which means that our inequality is going to be true. OK, so that concludes the first method. So this is true because we got a quadratic whose discriminant is less than or equal to 0. Therefore, it either has one root or no roots. Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. My second method is slightly different, even though we're going to be arriving you know, at something similar, of course. Uh, it is more inequality-like. OK, so I'm going to take this expression right here, a squared plus ab plus b squared plus b plus 1 third. Now, at this point, I don't really have any equation or inequality. I just have an expression, okay? So my goal is to prove that this is greater than or equal to zero. How am I going to do that? I'll complete the square. But this expression needs to equal something, right? So let's go ahead and call it 
I don't know, uh, something like for S for some maybe. Okay, great. So we, we're trying to prove that need to show need to show that S is greater than or equal to zero. That's our goal, right? So let's go ahead and do the following. Let's multiply both sides by four. So four S is going to give us four A squared plus four A B plus four B squared plus four B plus four thirds. Now you might be asking now, why am I multiplying by four? Well, that's a general strategy that we use a lot of times. If you have, you know, a polynomial uh, with coefficients of one, like in this case, we want to multiply by four because multiplying by four, it makes it easier to complete the square. Now consider the following. You're going to see what I'm talking about. Now go ahead and write it like this, 4a squared plus 4ab. If I can add b squared to this, this is going to be a perfect square and nice. So we have a perfect square two of whose coefficients are four. That's why we multiply by four because it's helpful. But what about the leftover terms? Let's go ahead and see what happens. The leftover terms are also gonna be nice. Since this inequality or this expression is greater than or equal to zero, it is going to work. Now I have four S, which is equal to this now. Let's go ahead and separate this into two pieces. The first piece is two A plus B quantity squared. The second part, I can basically write it as three times the quantity b squared plus 4 thirds b plus 4 ninths. And as you know before, this came up in the discriminant, right? Same, same idea. This can be written as b plus 2 thirds quantity squared. And what are you looking at? We have the sum of two squares, which obviously cannot be negative. Therefore, we were able to prove that 4s is always greater than or equal to 0. But that just means that you can divide both sides by 4 and get the s, which is our original expression, a squared plus ab plus b squared plus b plus 1 third is greater than or equal to 0. Because 4s is greater than or equal to 0, s is greater than or equal to 0. Because you can divide both sides by a positive quantity without changing the inequality. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.